9 sur 2, prise 1. Jotajit and I had met in childhood, but uh, we met again when I was in Calcutta um, after my studies. And uh, um, I was looking for a job, and he said, why don't you come and work with us in, in our advertising agency? So I joined it, and uh, we had a lot of time together. Um, and. He is the one who made me interested in cinema. What happened was that in my childhood I um, had a very strict Puritan parent who thought cinema was a kind of sin. Going to the cinema was uh, like going to the Pordello. <laughs> so um, I had been denied that opportunity. This, this was then provided by Sotajit and we became close friends over this with this interest and uh, because also of the old family connections it became very easy to, uh, to mix. We had had the same kind of background, our parents knew each other and uh, he would often leave a ticket on my, cinema ticket on my desk and uh, leave a message saying come and see this, this is a good film. We would go and sometimes I would uh, see a film and come and recommend it to him. And he would scream later on, it's a very bad film, why did you want me to see it? <laughs> or, or say, yes, it's, uh, it was nice. Uh, we saw, not together every time, we saw about um, 11 times the film, uh, Brief Encounter. Now that's uh, interesting because, uh, you know, it's the British, it's an English film and it has certain characteristics which are uh, close to close to Ray's characteristics. Um, so in, in these early days um, the, the, our interest was gradually developing in, in cinema and Shotajit used to uh, see a film many times and sometimes he would, he would, he would write down the script Sometimes he would write a script from uh, the original um, uh, piece of fiction and then compare his script with what the director had actually done. And this is the way he trained himself and uh, he made it interesting for me also. Uh, so that I, I got some parts of that uh, coming into my own way of thinking. And then one day he said, why don't we start a film society? I said, fine, it's a great idea. So Calcutta Film Society got started in 1947, the year of independence, uh, two months after independence. Well, uh, you may read some significance in this, or you may not. Uh, the date is accidental, I think. but. Uh, the general coincidence was not accidental. The in fact that independence, independence meant uh, an opening up. You know, the British had kept kept us closed down. It closed in uh, the a little box, square of uh, um, of uh, Hollywood films, British films, not even all Hollywood films because they didn't like all Hollywood films. They tried very hard to stop certain types of Hollywood films, especially the ones which showed in, uh, white women in a bad light <laughs> for the natives. <laughs> um, so uh, we, 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 we were without uh, contact with France, with, uh, with Germany, with... Well, with Germany there was a little bit earlier on, but uh, very little ac actually, uh, as far as the whole world was concerned. Mm, Russia, for instance, was out completely, uh, being Bolshevik. <laughs> and uh, France, um, and, uh, in fact all European countries. Um, and the British films in those days was, were pretty bad, except that, except that during the war, uh, during the war there had been some uh, some interesting uh, films made. 
They're coming. I put it off for long ago. I put it off long ago. Where are you? Hello. Um, could you start again from the foundation of the Film Society? Uh, and maybe explain us more about the, uh, what led you to, to found it. I mean, going from what you just said. C'est bon pour moi? C'est bon. The mm. seeing films together and seeing a, a number of good films right, um, create a restlessness in us. We must see more. We must must get out of this square box prepared for us by the British, in which only Hollywood films and and uh, and British films were allowed, um, very little of anything else. So we we became very uh, impatient about this. And uh, one day, uh, Shatijit said, "Why don't we start a film society?" And I said, "This is a great idea. Why not?" Uh, and started to work on it Im immediately and uh, one of the first films we saw was Maria Candelaria. It was uh, a Mexican film uh, with uh, Pedro Armendariz and uh, a famous uh, Mexican uh, vamp of some kind. <laughs> uh, I can't remember her name just now. Dolores Del Rio. Right, yes, of course. Mm. This was two months after independence. You may wish to read a significance in that, or, or you may not, but um, I would say that uh, the exact date, of course, was a coincidence, uh, but uh, the general, uh, the general uh, movement towards it towards this development was not uh, accidental because uh, the, 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 the because of this British cage that I was talking about uh, we were anxious to see films from abroad from from everywhere from other countries uh, and, uh, and the one way to do do this was to, to, to uh, start a film society um, when uh, Jean Renoir came in 1948, we started in 1947, he was here in 1948, um, nobody had heard of him except us. And they thought, in the film industry, they thought, oh, this must be some kind of second rater that uh, Hollywood has sent uh, around. Nobody has heard of him. <laughs> and we knew about his French films. We hadn't seen them but we knew about them and we had seen some of his Hollywood films. Uh, anyway, so the, 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 that is just to illustrate the fact that, uh, you know, it was an opening up with the, with the film society. Um, Shatish and I were joint secretaries and he was very fond of carrying the films under his arm himself. You know, we would go from one uh, distributor's office to another, and he would look at the films and say, ah, but uh, this is so-and-so, so-and-so film. Um, for instance, there was a, a film called Dance of Life. Uh, he looked at it and said, Dance of Life, Dance of Life, that's, uh, uh, that's, 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 uh, that's a famous French film. Uh, it was, uh, um, I'm trying to remember the, 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 the name now. Um, yes, I, I, I know it. Uh, well, I'll come back to that later on. Then. Um, cut. Can it the ball? Can it the ball? Yes. Uh, and we were very excited when we showed it to our members, and it was a success. And 
you know, that's the way it, it, it sort of went. And uh, could you explain where and uh, how were the meetings and uh, screenings held? Um, everything was uh, very haphazard and uh, <laughs> without any fixed uh, programs and uh, without fixed places to meet. Uh, one film we saw uh, at uh, in uh, the balcony of uh, Ray's, Ray's, Ray's house. Uh, I think it was uh, Melissa Corius in uh, The Great Walls. Um, beautiful singing. And uh, some meetings were held in my, in a little attic I had uh, uh, in, 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 in Calcutta, quite near Ray's house actually. And uh, meetings would be held there. Mm, with my wife producing the tea and joining us in the, in the discussions and so forth. And uh, we had uh, about 50 members, not all of whom paid their subscriptions. <laughs> could, you, could you tell us about this anecdote when uh, one of your meetings was uh, interrupted by uh, the owner of the house where it was held? Uh, after some time uh, of meeting in our uh, in my house and uh, going from place to place, uh, from week to week, um, I tried to find a permanent place for, for the society where we could rent a room and uh, hold our meetings. And that, that proved to be much more difficult than I thought. I told you earlier that my father used to think cinema was sin. And going to the cinema was next to going to the bordello. <laughs> um, so the, this, is the, this was the attitude that most people had. La house owners were shocked to, th to, 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 to uh, hear that we wanted to hold meetings of a film society. What is this film society? And uh, one of the, in one of the houses, uh, a house where poet Jivananand Das later lived. I went to uh, the, the, the gentleman, the, the house owner said, well, you look uh, like a gentleman, you will behave, you speak well. Uh, how do you are mixed up in, these, in films? And I said, this, this is what we think and so on and so forth. And I tried to explain our ideas to him. They fell on completely uh, deaf ears. Uh, he said, um, I like you as a person, but I don't think I can let out my room for discussions on film. Mm. Suppose, he said, suppose the, the room is upstairs. Suppose you are going up and my wife is coming down and you two clash. What happens? I said, clash? <laughs> I didn't understand what the word clash meant, <laughs> but there it was, you know. Mm. So the, we, we didn't, didn't get the room, and uh, we had to carry on holding meetings. And I, my little little garret up on the uh, second floor. Uh, at the time of the film society, did you already feel that? Ray was going to quit his job at Kimmers and become a full-time filmmaker. And uh, other than uh, Renoir's visit, which we will discuss later on, was there uh, other particular events that led him to take this decision? Yes. Uh, the more we saw films at the film society, the more restless uh, we both became and uh, Ray much more than myself, of course, as he was, he was, he, he, he was raring to go, you know. Um, uh, he, he, he kept writing scripts, he kept thinking of the films he could make. Uh, he wrote a script of, um, of, of uh, uh, Prisoner of Zenda, which could have been in the, his first film, for all you know. Mm. Uh, then um, there, there, was a, uh, there was a friend of ours called Harishatan Das Gupta, who had worked with Renoir in, 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 
he was he, he was in Renoir's class uh, when Renoir came uh, to give visiting lectures at the uh, UCLA, and uh, he had come back with great ideas uh, for making films. He he, uh, he bought the rights to uh, home, the Home and the World, Rabindranath Tagore's novel, and. Uh, um, tried to set up a production and uh, asked Ray to write the script, which he did. Mm. And it was the, it was the first script he did, he, he wrote. And so he was all the time anxious to to go into filmmaking, um, but as long as that didn't happen, he was writing. He was uh, seeing films. He was organizing work, uh, the work in the Calcutta Film Society, involving other people building up an audience, that sort of thing. But uh, inside of him, he was, uh, he, he was impatient to, to, to go into filmmaking uh, more than anything else. Um, again, we, we will talk about more specifically about Jean Renoir later on. But, uh, which were the most important events you did organize with the society? And also, maybe at the same time, you could talk about your best memories of that period, which maybe you could tell also about how long it lasted. Uh, the Calcutta Film Society remained sort of active, sometimes a little more active than <laughs> at other times. Um, up to about 1952. We never in, uh, went beyond about 50 uh, people in membership. And among members, we were very snobbish about this. Uh, we thought that uh, everybody shouldn't become a member of the Calcutta Film Society. Only people who were really interested, only people who had dreams of making good films in future, or writing about films and becoming film critics. Only that sort of sort of person should, should join the society. Uh, we were uh, quite snobbish uh, in, the, in our attitudes. Um, so that um, naturally the membership did not increase very much. Um, then um, there, there, were, there were very interesting uh, aspects to it. For instance, uh, once we uh, bought tickets for all the members for a show uh, at, uh, of um, Uday Shankar's uh, Kalpana, which is a film, uh, quite an interesting film on dance. And uh, with the purpose that after everybody had seen the film, we would discuss it, which we did. Quite a number, number uh, turned up at the, at the cinema, and uh, we, we uh, got together and, and talked about the film and uh, the new aspects that, uh, of cinema that uh, Uday Shankar had been uh, able to bring out, even though he was a dancer and not a filmmaker. Mm. And then one day uh, we wanted to go and see a uh, brief encounter on, 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 the, on Holy Day, that means the day on which you, you play with, with, with colors, the sprinkled colors on each other. And there was full of the life was full of adventure because getting to the cinema was extremely difficult. <laughs> I I I reached there drenching with drenched with uh, with coloured water, and Shotit couldn't get there because he had been he had got into difficulties on the way. Um, then um, another time I remember uh, Arn Sukhstorf was in Calcutta, and I got to meet him. And we got, we got uh, a number of his short films and uh, organized them very, very quickly at short notice. Um, and it was fascinating. We were absolutely mesmerized by his films. And uh, uh, at this time, we were uh, constantly looking around for places to see films. These were 35 millimeter films. Uh, we had, they had to be shown in, in uh, cinema houses. We would go and beg the cinema theatres and say, give it, give, give it to us for, for uh, two hours uh, early in the morning or something like that. So uh, 
some of them were kind and uh, helped us, and some of them shooed us out, <laughs> showed us the door, uh, and it went on, went on uh, in that way. And then the British film, uh, the, the British uh, Information Service, it was in those days, predecessor of the British Council, had a number of uh, of documentaries in their in their cupboards, and uh, they were very kind. They lent us projectors, films. We saw some of Grierson's films, documentaries, mm, like. Uh, Two of them, the two most important. One, the one film on, on fishing, uh, herring fishing, you know, um, and the other was on something else. Um, and a number of famous uh, British documentaries made during the before and during the war it was shown at the Film Society and created a lot of interest. Because we felt that the British films we used to see in the old days were so dull, uh, so bad. And during the war, something happened. The documentary movement, which started around 1929 and gradually uh, picked up strength, mm -hmm. uh, did something to the fiction film in, uh, in, in Britain. The British fiction film became colored by the documentary. And during the war, when it, the emotions came out a little more uh, in the British soul than was normally possible, um, the 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 emotion the emotionalization of the documentary in during the war, uh, but we did see some interesting documentaries uh, whose memories has faded as far as I'm concerned because I don't think we saw any masterpieces, but their attitude was good and uh, they promised to to help us in future try trying to find good fiction films and so on. So uh, it was through these the newly established. Um, Embass uh, embassies, consulates in Calcutta, really, uh, mm, that that we tried to develop uh, uh, links with Europe through which we could, we could get to see films. And I did the uh, took the rash step of ordering a copy of uh, Battleship Potemkin from England with the English uh, uh, subtitles. Mm, and uh, lo and behold, the film arrived. All of a sudden, one, one, one morning it was in my house. And I can't tell you how excited I was. And uh, then the police um, uh, came. When, uh, you know, after we had shown the film once or twice, the police said, well, what is this film? Why are you showing it? Like, we, we have to see it. And the, the, in those days, in the early days of independence, the censorship was uh, the, the, the police. The police ins a police inspector came and saw the film and said, this is revolutionary stuff. No, can't show it. And then I pleaded and so on. And then we had clandestine shines. So it just went on. <laughs> <laughs>